To me, the world of Odinata, dragonflies and damselflies, is fascinating, and I think everyone with a knowledge of these amazing creatures probably feels the same way. Each one of these insects captures and consumes dozens of flies and mosquitoes every day, and their larvae also eat mosquito larvae. I can't imagine how many more mosquitoes there would be in this world without dragonflies and damselflies. And I love nature, but mosquitoes are not a friend to me. In the summer, because I'm out taking photos morning, noon, and night, I get bitten probably between 30 and 100 times a day easily. And I don't want to douse myself in insect repellent all day and night, so I just take it. And on a related note, I will create a video all about mosquitoes in the future. In this video, I'll feature mostly dragonflies, with some damselflies, and I'll tell you how I get nearer to them for macro photography so that you too can get a closer look at these creatures. As you may have guessed, if you didn't already know, dragonflies are predators. They have exceptional eyesight and are expert flyers. They can hover, fly straight up and down, forwards, backwards, and even upside down. They use their legs and feet to snatch prey from the air. It is believed that dragonflies eat dozens or even more than 100 mosquitoes a day. They also eat flies, midges, butterflies, moths, damselflies, and even smaller dragonflies. And here is an eastern pond hawk with a speckled sharpshooter, which is a large leafhopper. Dragonfly nymphs live in water and eat pretty much whatever they can overpower, including mosquito larvae, bloodworms, other insect larvae, and even small tadpoles and tiny fish. There are thousands of Odonata species in the world and hundreds in North America. There are well over 100 species of damselflies and more than 300 species of dragonflies. And they have cool names too, like meadowhawk, pennant, skimmer, sand dragon, pondhawk, amberwing, saddlebags, clubtail, glider, now dasher, now darner, and... Oh, I digress. Dragonflies are typically found near water, but it's not uncommon to see them flying over fields and meadows in search of food. Now, I'm not 100% certain on what all dragonflies do in the winter. I imagine it depends on which area of the globe we're talking about. Some species of dragonfly migrate, such as the common green darner, while others overwinter in the larval phase. And let's talk about the green darner. They migrate, but not all of them. Some individuals overwinter in the larval phase. Additionally, I've read where dragonflies do not hibernate. Yet on unseasonably warm winter days in Texas and Oklahoma, I often see adult dragonflies out and about near areas of water. So, perhaps in some areas, adults will go dormant during the cold weather and reemerge on warm days. It wouldn't be unheard of as a lot of insects and spiders do just that. Dragonflies mate in mid-air, but will also do so while stationary. While mating, the male grasps the female by the back of the head, and the female curls her abdomen under her body to pick up sperm from the male's secondary genitalia in the front of its abdomen, forming a heart or wheel posture, as seen here. Different species lay their eggs in different ways and places, but with most species, it's in or near the water. Back to the green donner, however, which lays eggs in aquatic vegetation, as seen here. The male holds on to the female while she cuts slits in plant stems and deposits eggs. Obviously, if you walk right up to a dragonfly, it's going to fly away. So, it seems logical that a slow approach is imperative. And while that's true, there's more to it than that. To get within inches of a dragonfly, begin a slow approach. Once it gets scared and takes flight, which it will, just stop and remain still. There's a good chance it will return to its original perch. Once it does, resume your slow approach. Repeat this process as many times as it takes for the dragonfly to determine that you're not a threat. It's my guess that the dragonflies are watching for you to swat at them when they take flight, like a predator would do. So when you don't, they just kind of think you're not interested. Additionally, it can take some time to get close to one, several minutes or more. If I'm pressed for time, I won't mess with it, because it takes patience. 
Occasionally, they may fly off anyway, but in my experience, this works about 90% of the time. Also, they may take flight, then land on a nearby perch. In that case, it will just take a little more time. Dragonflies have it rough out there. I would venture to guess that millions or even billions are killed by vehicles each year, and many creatures prey on them as well, such as birds and bullfrogs. Damselflies, a close relative of dragonflies, are typically smaller than dragonflies, but in relation to the size of their heads, have longer and thinner bodies. And most, but not all, hold their wings vertically rather than horizontally, as dragonflies do. Damselflies prey on mosquitoes as well, but also flies, small moths, and other insects. In the future, I will have videos for both damselflies and dragonflies that are more in-depth. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you.